The graphics card shortage is over. You can buy this ATI Rage XL for around 15 to 20 US dollars from places such as Amazon, eBay and AliExpress. We have a PCI interface. This main board does not have AGP, so it's a perfect candidate. It is the Asus TUSI-M with socket 370. The chipset is from SIS, two SD RAM slots, three PCI slots, floppy and two ID ports. PS2, USB, serial, VGA, parallel, game port and audio. We have a Pentium 3, 1000 MHz, 256 kilobytes of cache and a front side bus of 133 MHz. 256 megabytes of RAM, a 32 gigabyte compact flash card with a compact flash to ID adapter and here we can see what the performance is like. It's pretty decent. If it has a BIOS we will flash it. I'm using the GoTek USB floppy emulator to boot DOS and then running the flash utility. We get a warning message. Apparently the main board doesn't match but it works anyway. We need an optical drive because some of the games come on disk. We're using a Sound Blaster Live for Windows and DOS sound. Like in previous videos, we're using the Audig 2 ZS drivers. Have a look in the video description. I will put all the resources that are used in this video down below. The ATR Rage XL is quite interesting. Here we have a couple of Rage cards from the second, third and fourth generation. And when this card launched, the Rage 4 was already on the market. I found a press release document from February of 1999 announcing the Rage XL and Rage XC graphics chips with production scheduled for March of 1999. The previous graphics chips were built on a larger 350 nanometer process. This one is built with a 250 nanometer process. So that means it runs cooler, consumes less power and we should also get a little bit of overclocking. Next we're installing Windows 98 SE followed by the SIS chipset drivers. I downloaded the latest graphics drivers directly from the AMD website from 2002 version 4, 13, 26, 55. So I ran a few benchmarks and games and I quickly noticed a few issues. For example in Expandable we are seeing some messed up textures. In GL Quake I could see some flickering going on with the uh, heads up display and in Final Fantasy 7 uh, it reports that 8-bit palleted textures is not supported. So I had another look at the latest drivers from the AMD website and it actually supports Windows Millennium Edition and doesn't mention Windows 98 so I guess that's what's going wrong here. So I used the Wayback Machine and accessed the ATI driver support pages and we're using the second latest driver from November of 2000, version 4, 12, 26, 47 and all the issues went away. In 3 Mark 99 Max we're getting a score of 1312 with 15 FPS for the race and 11.7 FPS for the first person benchmark. First up we have GL Quake and we can see how the performance scales with increased resolutions. We have enough video memory this time to run games at 1024 by 768. All the benchmarks are run at 16-bit colors. Here we have incoming and at 640 by 480 we're getting almost 30 FPS. So the performance is quite improved compared to the Rage 2 that we looked at recently. This is expendable and again at 640 by 480 we're getting around 25 FPS which is pretty decent. Next I wanted to find out how the card compared with 32-bit colors and we can see a performance drop of around 20% compared to 16-bit. I had a go at overclocking with PowerStrip. The default clocks are 83.75 MHz for both the core and the memory. I overclocked it to 100 MHz and here we can see the result in 3D Mark 99 Max. We're seeing a nice boost in performance. VGA signal quality is pretty good. 1600 by 1200 at 60 Hz and I took some photos of how it looks like on a LCD monitor and even with a magnifying glass to my eyes the image is perfect. We have more coming up, MS-DOS, Windows 3.11 and the proprietary ATI 3D CIF API. But now let's test a few games. 
This is the original Colin McRae Rally. I installed it from the CD and then installed the latest patch. In the game options I found a setting for the ATI Rage 2 but that limited the resolution to 512 by 386 and low details. So I changed the option to default and now I could play at 640 by 480 and also configure the higher graphics details. And yeah, the game runs just fine. Next we have Tomb Raider 2. This is the version from GOG. You can just install it on your modern computer, copy the files across and off you go. We're running at 640 by 480 and it runs smooth. The game has a uh, frame cap of 30 FPS and yeah, runs fine on this video card. Here we have Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. This is installed from the CD with the latest patch installed at 640 by 480. The game looks and runs fine, but in the second level we can see it does not display fog. And when accessing the readme file it actually mentions that the ATR cards are unsupported. So maybe this is just a compatibility issue uh, because in other games I did see fog. Also notice the high FPS. In the driver are no options to toggle V-Sync and also power strip didn't give me any options. If you are aware of any tools that work with this video card, I would be very much interested. This is Thief 2 running at 640 by 480. Also the GOG version, install it on your Windows 10 machine and just copy the folder across. And here we have Fog working. You just have to make sure that you enable it in the game settings. So not quite sure why under Shadow of the Empire we're not getting Fog on the ATI card. Maybe it's just a bug to do with that particular game. I tried Unreal Tournament. It does run but only in windowed mode, uh, pressing Alt Enter. It tries to toggle into full screen mode, but uh, it's not working. This is also the version from GOG. Install it on your Windows machine, copy the files across and off you go. But do remove the Glide uh, DLL files if you have a 3 dfx Voodoo card. Next up we have the Half-Life demo, 640x480, we're using the OpenGL game option. Performance is average between 20 and 30 FPS. This is Blood 2, again the version from GOG and here we have some information uh, specific to what 3D chip you have and if you click on ATR Rage Pro it mentions that you should enable MIP map sharpening as well as low details and then the game runs okay. We have it running at 640 by 480. I have tried changing the details to high and we can see here what it looks like but the performance goes down. This is Glyph Barker's Undying. Again, the GOG version running at 640 by 480. We're getting very low FPS. So I went into the options and I set everything to low. It runs a little bit better now, but it's clear that this game is just a little bit too modern for this graphics card. And here we have Aliens vs Predator 2. This is a game from 2001 and it's quite impressive to see that it runs on this old video card. But the performance is really poor. It's not something I would play with this graphics card. DOS performance at 320 by 200 is excellent. The slowest result is Doom with 100 FPS. At 640x480 we're getting also decent results. Quake is a little bit disappointing. We're getting 45.8 FPS. Would have been nice to get 60 FPS in that game. There's more to talk about DOS. When I was looking at the Wayback Machine on the ATI website I found some DOS drivers. This one gives you the VESA BIOS extension. I couldn't measure any performance improvement but this might improve compatibility with some late DOS games that run at higher resolutions. Gonna has put a lot of effort in this VGA scrolling compatibility document and it shows that the ATI cards have scrolling issues with a few games. Here we can see Commander Keen, this is the fourth game and yeah, it has some bugs in this game. Now I believe there are some patches to fix this but just be aware that some DOS games will have scrolling issues. He also mentions Prehistoric as having issues 
but I couldn't verify that. It looks fine to me. When you get to the edge of the screen, it scrolls and seems to be working fine for me. Uh, this issue with the scrolling is a little bit overblown. Uh, the vast majority of games, probably 99 point something percentage of DOS games, will work and look beautifully on ATI cards. Because the ATI RAGE XL, like the other RAGE cards, have a Mac 64 core, we can use those Windows 3.11 drivers to change resolution and colors. You need to edit system.ini. Here we have Windows 3.11 running at 1024 by 768 with 8-bit colors and also 16-bit colors. It works just fine. And also here I have a benchmark result for, I believe it is, WinBench 4. And finally, I wanted to test the ATI 3D CIF compatibility. That's a proprietary API. Unfortunately, this is where things didn't work out for me. I believe this is because the Rage XL launched so late. Uh, you need to use older drivers to be compatible with games that use the ATI 3D CIF API and especially the PCI version of the Rage XL only works with really late drivers and therefore I was not successful in running a single game supporting the ATI 3D CIF. Uh, it's a huge disappointment. We haven't given up just yet. Um, I uh, helped Gonna to buy one of these cards and he will do some testing. Maybe he can modify some drivers. So I uh, hope dies last, especially Tomb Raider. I would love to see this game running at 800 by 600 because the Rage XL renders graphics a little bit nicer compared to the other Rage 3 generation graphics cards and then it also can be overclocked and out of the box is clocked a little bit higher. So this is the fastest card from the Rage 3 generation. And also I found an interesting YouTube video from Mark. He found out that this PCI card is not compatible with old mainboards which use 5 volt PCI slots. However, he found a mod by soldering a voltage regulator onto the card. So if you're interested in doing that, I'll put a link down below to his video. So guys, that was a lot of information and I really enjoyed working with this graphics card. I always like when you can buy something brand new uh, that's affordable and readily available in stock and the ATR Rage XL does not disappoint. There are a few YouTube videos out there and they are basically using this card in a modern computer and of course in such a situation uh, it's uh, not good at all. But in the context of retro PC gaming, this is definitely something I can recommend to you. It's good in DOS. Uh, it is great in Windows 3.11, in Windows 98. It's compatible with old games. Uh, there are DOS VESA drivers. The VGA signal quality is good. Uh, and yeah, this is a really nice uh, video card. In an old 486 with uh, PCI, it will not work, which is a bit of a shame but this is best paired with a Pentium 3 anyway. Maybe it doesn't have to be uh, one gigahertz, something around 500 megahertz uh, should be perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, the project worked pretty smooth. Uh, at some point I ran into some compatibility issues. So I reduced the front side bus from 133 to 100 megahertz and then the Pentium 3 ran at 750 megahertz and then the stability was restored. Not quite sure what the issue was. Could be old capacitors, could be something with the, the, the buy settings, I'm not sure. But all the benchmark results are from the system running at one gigahertz. And yeah, so another interesting project. I hope you guys found it interesting. Uh, if you have any specific questions, please leave them down below. Always eager to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a thumbs up uh, or a thumbs down, but apparently thumbs down, thumbs downs are not being counted anymore, which is silly. And yeah, that's it. So let me know what do you think of the ATI Rage XL? And yeah, are you gonna rush out and buy one? These are readily available. No graphics card shortage for this one. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.